Okay, so we're going to look at our extreme weather event in the UK, and our case study for that is Boz Castle floods back in 2004. We're first off going to look at the causes for that, and we can split those into a um, physical or human causes. So we start off with the physical causes. Firstly, Boz Castle sits on the confluence of three rivers. The confluence is the point at which the rivers join. Obviously, three rivers coming together does increase the chances of flooding. However, this wouldn't normally cause flooding without another instigating factor. And the instigating factor in this case was extremely um, unusual heavy rainfall for the time of year. Within 24 hours, there was a cloudburst storm event which resulted in the rainfall um, of 200 millimetres in the space of just 24 hours. The storm was so large that the cloud base extended 40,000 feet into the atmosphere. In terms of the human causes, uh, we also had uh, deforestation in the valley surrounding Bors Castle that obviously reduced the amount of interception that the trees were able to do, which allowed more water to flow very quickly into the river. The speed at which the river uh, the water access to the river was increased also by a large tourist car park being built directly above the village. This impermeable tarmac surface increased surface runoff, making the river flood very quickly. The speed of the water entering the river is also dependent on the steepness of the surrounding hills, and Boz Castle sits at the base of a very steep valley. So we've got the causes of the Boz Castle floods back in 2004. We now need to look at the impacts of an extreme weather event. So we're going to look at that in this left-hand hill here. So in geography, we always like to break things down. So we're going to look at the economic impacts, the social impacts, and the environmental impacts. So, starting off with the economic impacts, we saw an estimated total damage of around £15 million. Pounds, predominantly caused uh, by destruction to buildings and local businesses as the river rushed through the town of Boz Castle and destroyed uh, neighbouring properties that were close to the river. Boz Castle's major tourism industry, uh, industry is obviously tourism. It's a very uh, attractive location on the seafront and therefore the destruction of most of its hotels, cafes and other tourist businesses businesses and the reputation of the area was severely damaged resulting in a huge decrease in tourism and the financial gains from that. In terms of social impacts fortunately there were no deaths in uh, Boz Castle although as we said there was huge economic damage. We talked about properties being damaged in total over 68 different buildings and homes were flooded this also resulted in people losing their homes and belongings, but also resulted in an economic impact of an increase in insurance prices, as most companies were uh, unwilling to give insurance to people living in the village. In terms of environmental impacts, first we saw huge amounts of riverbank erosion due to the uh, force of the water flowing down through the river. Also, and we've positioned it down here on purpose, many of the cars that were up in our car park at the start which was one of our human causes of the floods, were washed down through the town, hitting bridges on their way and destroying them, and ended up in the harbour down at the bottom of the uh, village. In total, we saw 32 vehicles washed out into the harbour. Obviously, they were stuck at the bottom of the harbour and water seeped into them, and uh, oil came out of their engines and petrol, leading to a high amount of water pollution in the harbour. We can also link into the economic impact there because there was a huge amount of cost of retrieving these vehicles and also diving down to ensure that there was nobody trapped inside them. Okay, moving on to management. This one, this hill over here. There's uh, several different strategies that we used. Firstly, in the short term, social media apps like Facebook and Twitter 
provided pe- uh, locals in Boscars with up-to-date information about the flood warning and risk. Uh, the Met Office used these uh, social media platforms to warn people of the necessary need to evacuate and to avoid the area. On top of this, the Met Office also provides its own system of flood warning using a traffic light system. So the traffic light system uh, is a very simple system used by the Met Office to give people warning and information regarding any extreme weather events, uh, particularly in the event of flooding. Uh, The green light basically means that uh, people should be aware that there is a potential risk, although it is incredibly low. Amber means that they should be prepared to evacuate in case the uh, extreme weather becomes worse and red is a point at which there is a high risk of flooding within the next uh, few hours and therefore they should be prepared to evacuate and uh, move to safety if necessary and informed to do so. One of the things that they did do in Boswell in terms of a long term management, obviously these two are quite short term, uh, long term management strategy was to spend £4.6 million on flood defences in Boscastle. This involved widening and deepening the river channel so that it could hold more volume of water, more discharge and therefore reduce the chances of flooding and also build storm drains that would take high amounts of rainfall quickly away from the town. 4.6 million does seem like a significant amount of money however actually in terms of flood defences it's quite small. Uh, Other flood defences in the UK have seen much larger amounts of money spent on it. This is predominantly because obviously Boscastle is a very small town or village, therefore actually it's, uh, the cost-benefit analysis of building the defences uh, means that spending any more probably wouldn't be financially uh, worthwhile. The other thing to consider as well is that the Met Office viewed the Boscastle extreme weather event as a 1 in 400 year flood. That means it would only happen one, in four, one time in 400 years, therefore the chance of another event of similar magnitude happening in the near future is very small, therefore again the need to spend a large amount of money was actually relatively limited. Remember when you're talking about uh, extreme weather events, uh, the exam might also ask you for evidence of the increase in frequency of those in the UK. And whilst flood events like this is a nice case, that it's not the only kind of extreme weather event we've seen. You can also include the increase in frequency of summer heat waves across the UK and most of continental Europe, and uh, increase in uh, storm events, and increase in cold with, uh, winters where we have in- increased snowfall. Any of those things count as extreme weather. It's any weather that is basically uh, unusual to the normal conditions and we have seen an increase in frequency in those.